An ACDC converter circuit designed using two ideal op amps and two diodes shown here. It is effectively a cascade of two stages. The stage one is this rectifying half wave rectifying amplifier, and the second stage is just uh, one stage of a low pass filter amplifier. Okay, so if the components are selected properly, assuming that input is a sinusoidal voltage like this with a period of T, uh, then the output voltage of the circuit can be shown that is equal to a constant or DC value defined by uh, these components. Basically, the value of four resistors in the circuit like this times the peak value of voltage at input Vm, as you can see in this sinusoidal formula, divide by pi. Um, and then, basically, if this is true, then with the proper selection of value of these resistors, we can uh, have this circuit working effectively as an RMS meter or have this circuit working as a peak detector. Okay, so let's see how this is working. Focus on the first stage of the cascade, which is the half wave rectifying. What I want to show is this is the case, meaning, uh, let me copy paste this. So what I want to show now is the voltage at midpoint here. At, uh, let me change the color. So the voltage at midpoint here, at, at here, is going to look like this, assuming that input, assuming that input is like this. So this is input, and this is Vx, if this node is Vx, or voltage at node x. So interesting, I want to show that in the first portion of period, so let's say this is one period and this is zero, during the first half portion of period up to uh, t over 2 time, so x-axis is time. I want to show that uh, as the input is increasing and going through positive values of a sinusoid, before hitting zero, the output at, at the intermediate node here, right at the output of the first stage, is exactly following input roughly, and then hit zero. The moment input gets to zero and want to become a negative value, then output intermediate node value Vx just remain at zero. So that's what we refer to as half wave rectifier, because it only passed the half of the sinusoidal signal, let's say, at positive value, and doesn't let the negative value to pass. So let's see how this is, how is this working and why this is the case. Uh, assume that the supply voltages for the op amps are properly connected. So we are connected to, say, positive 5 volt and negative 5 volt for the sake of argument. This is op amp 1, and it's an ideal op amp. So op amp 1 is operating properly. Now, when we are in the first portion or first side, half of the one period here, during the time that V in is positive, so we apply V in here. Because V in is positive, it is trying to push a current like this toward the op amp. Effectively, it's trying to push up or increase the value of the negative or inverting terminal of the up and one while the positive one is clamped to zero. So while positive one is clamped to zero, negative one is trying to get above zero. As a result, up and one notices a voltage at the negative that is at the negative terminal that is higher than the positive terminal, and therefore because of super large open loop gain, it will push the output voltage here at the output of the op amp toward the negative rail or negative five volt. So output tr immediately sends that and push to negative five, but as soon as it's happening, uh, then this diode is dead because uh, the voltage is not uh, properly there to keep it on. So, and uh, as a result, this current I will just go through this resistor R2 and go and loop back through this diode number two. So let's say this is diode D2, and then it would go to the output of the op amp. So it exactly looked like this. Basically, during the first uh, half of the period between time zero and uh, T over two, uh, the circuit looks like an inverting amplifier that is as simple as this. Negative, positive, positive is connected to, let's say, uh, virtual or true ground, and then we have R2 in the feedback loop. I'm neglecting uh, the existence of uh, the fact that D2 has a voltage drop, so it doesn't matter for the analysis, but um, this is R1 and this is Vn. 
So V into Vx is like an inverting amplifier. Super simple in this scenario. We would say Vn is just equal to negative R2 over R1. So negative feedback resistor divided by R1 times Vn. That's just a simple KCL we can write at this uh, input negative terminal of op amp to just get to this to get to this simple equation. So Vx Vx is equal to negative R2 over R1 Vn. Okay, but what happens during the what happens during the second half of one cycle? So when we get to T over two and between T, T and T, and T over two. Uh, when the input is becoming a negative voltage, as you can see on this figure, if I change the color back to, let's say, black, then what I'm saying is during this second half of one period, input is a negative voltage. And as a result, what happens is the whole scheme is now changing. So input being negative tries to pass a current like this to the circuit like this to R1, and since input is now a negative, it is trying to push down toward negative values, the voltage of negative terminal. As a result, op-amp observed now a sort of a positive delta between the positive node that is still at zero and negative uh, input terminal. And because of a super large open loop voltage gain, op-amp will push the output voltage toward the positive rail positive rail being 5 volt positive supply rail. So output jumps to plus 5, immediately turns on, while trying to jump to plus 5, immediately turns on this diode V1. And as soon as diode V1 is turned on, um, the whole uh, feedback loop becomes just a short circuit, literally, nearly, between the output of the op amp and negative terminal. So basically, in the, second, uh, in the second half of one period, compared to the first half, uh, now the circuit looks like V in, a resistor, that is R1, but then we have V plus, which is grounded, of course, but negative terminal directly connected to output, since now feedback loop is, is, is active, then virtual short which basically says virtual short which basically says uh, the positive input voltage and negative input voltage should be equal for um, an op amp in negative feedback in, in linear region of operation therefore output becomes uh, at this node zero and what I'm trying to say is uh, d2 is now shut down so d2 cannot function cannot turn on. As a result, this zero volt at the negative terminal, because no current passed through R2, this zero volt at negative terminal is also appearing at Vx. And what I'm trying to say in summary, when we are having a negative value for Vn, then intermediate node Vx is zero and therefore nothing goes to output and output is zero as well. So now we can focus on the second half of the circuit. The second half of the circuit, this portion, is observing this input. So Vx is this input that we just talked about. This input. Half wave rectified input. So how is it now working? Okay. Because of this cap and the way that the cap is in feedback loop of the second stage or op amp 2, which we assume is properly again biased with the plus 5 volt, let's say, supply and negative 5 volt supply connected. It's a negative feedback, so op amp is stable in linear region of operation. As a result, uh, what I can say is, all right, um, intuitively when uh, the impedance of cap, which is 1 over CS in S domain or in sinusoidal steady state analysis replacing S with J omega, becomes uh, JC omega. So when frequency omega of sinusoidal component is large enough, it's in denominator, and therefore denominator of impedance of cap is large enough, therefore we can say that for large enough frequency, impedance of cap goes to zero. Effectively, when frequency is large enough, according to the design of the circuit, 
then the cap becomes short and uh, above a certain frequency, let's say above a cutoff frequency. So above a cutoff frequency, effectively the circuit becomes, so the circuit above, above, beyond the cutoff frequency, the circuit becomes something like this for the second uh, portion. So we have R3, we have the Vx, but then from the input terminal, we are shorted to the output, which then the negative feedback is stable. Is uh, This op amp number two is working right, but then it trying to, because of mutual short, enforce that input a negative terminal and out, input positive terminal. They are the same voltage zero, and therefore, because of shorted negative terminal to output, output is zero as well. So what I'm trying to say is, this is a low-pass filter. When the frequency of incoming signal is beyond a level that depends on choice of uh, components in the circuit, then output is zero. Only below a certain frequency, it, it, it is operating properly. Because below a certain frequency, we can assume that the impedance of cap is large enough so that cap is open. And therefore, if the cap is open, the second stage just ba barely acting like a a uh, very standard inverting amplifier that looks like R4 and R3 and Vx and then V out. So in that case, when, uh, let's say, when frequency of Vx is greater than cutoff, nothing passes. When frequency of Vx, the intermediate node, is less than, substantially less than, let's say, cutoff frequency, then we can make the assumption that the circuit looks like this and as a result for the second stage and as a result v out in such scenario is simply negative r4 divided by r3 times vx which is just the voltage gain or voltage transfer function of the simple inverting amplifier op amp uh, topology which is this one okay so uh, now what how can we talk about the cutoff frequency well uh, take a look at what's coming in. We just talked about it. This signal is coming in as Vx here. This is Vn. So I need to, this is a periodic signal, of course. So you can see that this Vx shown here is periodic, obviously. Meaning it's repeating itself. This is one period of it. This is one period. And it's repeating itself. Again, the shape of signal is repeating. And this is time, of course. All right, so since it's a periodic signal, it has a Fourier transform or Fourier series. So this signal, which is Vx, has a Fourier series. In that Fourier series, it has a DC component. So it has a constant or DC plus some number of, uh, let's say, AC component, which it means we are dealing with a bunch of sinusoidal. Um, so I'm not going to write them, but you have, let's say, uh, just, just in a very rudimentary fashion, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it, but it is not accurate. Let's say you have uh, a sinusoidal component in the form of a, a sine, uh, let's say, uh, exactly omega naught, this frequency omega naught that we had, because originally Vn is Vm sinusoid of omega naught t. So this omega naught or radian frequency is 2 pi f naught, which is 2 pi over period. F naught is equal to 1 over period. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is 2 pi over t or omega naught t, and then you have a coefficient for it, so your coefficient is here, plus a coefficient cosine 2 pi omega naught. And also we have components that are double this frequency, so this is basically uh, this signal broken down into its equivalent in the form of having a DC and having a component like this scaled and having a component that is twice as fast as this so a component that is go going as twice as fast so that is the double frequency component and the triple frequency components okay so why am i saying this well if we design the cutoff frequency right so the cutoff frequency of the second stage if it is designed of the second stage if it is designed properly so that it is less than uh, the omega naught enough, so then, so it's substantially less than omega naught, let's say, or the frequency of the sinusoidal signal coming in, 
then it means it will not let any of these components pass through the second stage or low pass filter. All of these components will be dead. And by, by making this uh, cutoff frequency of the circuit substantially less than omega naught, the little wiggling remaining because of whatever little portion of these components are passing through the circuit becomes negligible. So therefore, if we do that, then Vx, v, then what happens is just the DC portion of Vx gets to the output. So we, the only thing we need to do is, one, make sure that this is satisfied, and two, find this DC portion. Find the DC portion. Well, that part is easy. So the DC portion of uh, this signal can be easily computed using a Fourier uh, integral, which says the DC component of Fourier series expansion of a periodic signal is simply 1 over T integral from one, 0 to T1 period. And then we have the signal, which is Vx. And of course, uh, what we need to do is just we need to integrate over the specific uh, 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 period of uh, that Vx. So we have Vx dt. Okay, so if we do that, it's 1 over t is uh, 0 to t, and then the signal, of course, as you can see, is half wave rectified, so beyond uh, t over 2 is 0, obviously. So I don't need to compute this integral beyond uh, t over 2. So I just keep the upper limit of uh, integration to t over 2, and then I have sine omega naught, which is 2 pi over t, t, dt. Okay, the rest of it is just a straightforward. If you compute this integral, uh, you, you will see that the outcome of this integral becomes exactly Vm. Uh, sorry, I dropped the Vm. There is a Vm here because the signal is Vm sine 2 pi um, over tt. So just be careful that this component here is what I refer to as omega naught. Okay, so you would end up Vm and over pi. So that Vm over pi is actually showing up because of the DC component of Fourier series ex expansion um, of the Vx. So what happens is if everything is done right, meaning that if this selection of the cutoff frequency is correct, then the DC component of this, so the DC component, component of Vx is vm over pi which that's the component that can pass of course we need to keep in mind the gains right you can see that uh, from the equation one here from the equation one on top here equation one vx is negative r2 over r1 being so we have a negative r2 over r1 so we have to be careful that uh, negative r2 over r1 from equation 1 and also from equation 2 here v out is related to vx by negative r4 over r3 so we also have negative r4 over r3 so negative cancel out negative and as a result what I get v out is equal to simply r2 r4 divide by r1 r3 times v max or p divide by pi so that's the proof of that's the proof of what we wanted to show for this circuit very beautiful property now um, if you select uh, if you select the the choice of r2 over if you select this choice this s scalar coefficient so if r2 r4 divided by r1 r3 is set to uh, let's say is set such that it is roughly pi roughly you don't need it to be exactly pi then v out becomes roughly vm which means your circuit becomes a peak detector now if on the other hand if you set Let's say, I'm going to write it here, on the other hand, as a choice, if you set R1 equal to R, let's say, 3 equal to R, just the value of resistor R that is proper for the circuit. 
if you set R2 equal to R4 equal to 1.5R, then Vout in such scenario becomes obviously 1.5 squared R squared divided by R squared times Vm over pi. And these two cancel out, so it simply become it, it simply becomes uh, 2.25, which is 1.5 squared Vm over pi. One beautiful thing is the 2.25 is roughly pi over rad 2 Vm over pi. So then in this scenario, effectively pi cancel out pi, and you get Vm over rad 2 which is the RMS voltage, so RMS. Therefore, in this scenario, with the proper selection of the value of resistors, we can get V out by proper selection of components equal to Vm over rad 2, which is, or square root of 2, which is the RMS voltage of input. Um, we need to be careful that the condition that is highlighted on top, which is the cutoff frequency of the second stage, need to be substantially less than omega naught. So what is that cutoff frequency? That cutoff frequency is uh, defined by, so we need to be careful about that, is defined by 1 over R4C, basically the feedback resistor for the second stage. So the feedback resistor for the second stage, as you can see, and uh, for uh, and C. So uh, this is requiring careful attention. So for example, when we are saying 1 over R4C should be, sorry, the cutoff frequency. So the cutoff frequency of the circuit is this. We want this to be substantially less than omega naught. Omega naught is uh, what is the input signal uh, frequency Let's say it might be 50 hertz, it might be 60 hertz if you're doing AC to DC analysis for, um, let's say, practical application, or it might be other frequency depending on application. But omega naught is 2 pi over T, and uh, in, this uh, in this action, this is known. So omega naught is what you desire. And then here, with the proper selection of value of R4 and C, you can guarantee that the circuit is working properly. And then after that is done, then you carefully select the value of R in this setup so that you get your RMS meter like this as is shown. I hope that this example is helpful uh, in terms of showing how a sort of a peak detector or RMS meter uh, ACDC converter uh, using a cascade of uh, half wave rectified amplifier and then um, low pass filter amplifier is working and functioning.